will be added on later in the next step. So the results, though this is the first step of the results, all we're going to be doing is bringing in both the staff ID and the staff. So those results are going to come directly in here, U2 through V2. Once we have those results, I need to check for the last row. That last row using column M is row 8 using column U. So I'm going to check that to determine the last row. That last result row is based on column U. If that last results row is less than 3, that means we have no staff for that period of time. And we can exit out of the sub. There's no staff to load. If we do have staff, what I want to do is I want to take whatever that formula that we created to extract that staff picture. This was called the staff picture formula. And we want to place that all in all of the rows associated with that in column W. So W3 through W in the last results row formula equals whatever formula is in W1. And that's going to bring it and automatically calculate it. And the reason we do this is we don't really want formulas floating in an entire column. We don't have any staff, right? I only want formulas where they're needed, right? We don't want a workbook full of formulas that are not being used. So I want to make sure that they're being used. And to do that, we only place them in the cells that we need. So in this case, W3 through W8 formula equals whatever is in W1 formula. That's going to bring in that formula and show those pictures. We need those pictures because it is those pictures that we're going to be able to display directly inside our shapes here because I want those pictures. When I take those picture names and I combine them with that picture folder along with the backslash, we then have a full file path and we can then insert that picture and then position it accordingly. And we're going to do that with the following. So then what we're going to do is we're going to loop through all of those results. So we're going to have our results. Here's our results all the way from three to eight. I'm going to loop through those adding shapes based on those individual staff. So for the results row equals three to the last results row, we're going to create these staff shapes. But first I need to extract some information and put that information into variables. So the staff ID is simply going to be whatever's in U and the result row. Right? That's our staff ID coming from column U. We then want to have our staff name. That's going to come from column V. And then I want to have that staff picture. and That's going to come from column W. Putting all those into string variables. Then what I do is I'm ready. Now I've got all the data that I need. Now I'm ready to create those shapes. So what we're going to be doing is taking our sample shape right here called MM sample. I'm going to be duplicating this and then I'm going to be renaming that shape accordingly. So the first thing we want to do, mind map with that shape, MM sample. We're going to duplicate that and then we're going to give it a very specific name calling MM staff. Remember, we need to make sure we give it very specific names so that we can remove it very, very easily when we need to clear it out. So we're going to give it MM staff and we're going to give it making sure that it is a unique name. So we're going to tie the staff ID to that because each staff has their own unique name number and therefore we know that the name of the shape then is going to be unique once we've given it a name we can then focus on working with it so with my map shapes that brand new shape that we've created we can then position it we're going to base it on the left position that first initial left position base it on the top position that's that first position that we've created what i also want to do is i want to place the name inside the text right their name text frame text range text equals the staff name we're going to set the staff name as text okay then what i want to do is i want to auto shape it. if we notice that notice these shapes mary smith has a smaller one david davidson has a larger one right so i want those shapes to be dynamic the widths i want to be dynamic however if we just auto shape them completely and don't set a height they're going to have different heights i want them all to have the same height but i want to have them different widths based on the name right so notice each one has a different width and that is because we are using this one auto size text frame and it's auto shape we want the shape to fit the text right size shape to fit the text so now the shape has been fixed now this is going to be both horizontally and vertically both width and the height are going to be auto size but i don't want that i only want the width so what we're going to do is we're going to set a very specific height we're going to set that height to 18 pixels okay so that way they're all going to have the same height but they'll have different widths and that's exactly what i want it's going to give it a nice look of uh, customized so that we don't have any extra spacing right so it kind of gives it a little bit better look great so now what i mean we've already placed the shape so now it's time that we place that picture now notice this particular shape that we have here if we take a look at this and we look in the format here we'll go ahead and format this shape i'll right click and format we see that in the text options here in the text options i've given it a very left margin of 0.3 i've given it space for that picture right if our